بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين السلام عليكم everyone today I would like to discuss a very important and practical topic which relates to a supposedly small sin which is the sin of backbiting you see backbiting is different compared to other sins because when we backbite we can't really see or feel the effects of backbiting for example, if we compare it to stealing, we can see and feel the effects of stealing. There's alarms, there's police, but when we backbite, it's a subtle action. And this supposedly small sin is really grand. So, before we discuss why we backbite and the different types of backbiting, we first need to define backbiting. And who better to define it than Prophet Muhammad So, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, do you know what backbiting is? They said, God and his messenger know best. He then said, it is to say something about your brother that he would dislike. The second hadith says, if what you say about him, your brother is true, then you are backbiting him. But if it is not true, then you have slandered him. So backbiting and slandering are similar topics, or similar, similar, similar in essence. But backbiting relies on truth, while slandering relies on falsehood. So we cannot use the excuse that we are saying the truth to justify our backbiting. So if we have to summarize these two had hadith, we can see that it is to mention something about someone else that he would dislike in his actions. It may relate to his physical appearance, his actions, or his sayings. And backbiting is one of the greatest sins that will doom the person to hellfire. So moving on. Why do we backbite? What pushes us to backbiting? So first and foremost, envy. When we're envious of someone, we subconsciously want to take away the goodness that he has obtained. So what do we do? We backbite. We destroy his reputation in the eyes of others. And what does this envy lead to? This envy leads to hatred. This hatred, when you love someone, you obviously want to speak good about him. But when you hate someone, on the other hand, you want to, you want to display his negatives, you want to display his flaws. And this hatred will lead to anger. And anger makes you lose your emotions. It makes you say disgusting things. And this will ruin a person's first impression on another person. But backbiting is not always like that. It might start because you, you want to be humorous or you, you start with because of playing. So you try to act funny at the expense of someone else's reputation. Or sometimes people start blaming other people. When we blame other people, we try to prove ourselves as innocent at the expense of the other person's innocence. Because we are destroying the other person's reputation because of this. And sometimes pride takes control. When we're prideful, we tend to see ourselves above everyone else, while we, while everyone else is lower than us. So, if so, because because of our pride, we start backbiting and talking behind their backs. And last, but certainly certainly not least, we do this because we want to start conversation. And this is really evident in our Islamic community, because a lot of people start gossiping about people, and they, and this creates widespread problems in the community. So, what are the different types of backbiting? There are three. First, backbiting with the tongue, which is obvious. And second, backbiting by listening. Prophet Muhammad said, the listener is also a backbiter. So if we are listening to someone backbiting, we are not free of this blame. And the last is backbiting by using signs. Let's say, for example, I was talking to someone, and then that person turns around. And then I point at that person in a disrespectful way. That pointing is also backbiting, because that person wouldn't like you to point at him. So, if this is such a disgusting, vile sin, then what are the consequences of it? First and foremost, the spreading of loathing, hatred and rivalry between individuals of society. People that were once allies, even friends, are now enemies. They hate each other, even though they never got to really understand each other. And this is all because of talking behind someone's back. Secondly, the lack of trust between many people and the creation of conflict. What is the Islamic community built on? It's built on trust. And if this trust is not there, conflict will take its place. And this all starts because of the simple action of backbiting. Thirdly, the exposure of people's flaws. We as human beings have no right to expose people's flaws. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept these flaws hidden, then we shouldn't expose them. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the right to judge people. And lastly and finally, corruption of the people's belief and ethics from the inside and the outside. You see, the last three points were all external factors. 
But this last point relates directly into our internal factor because this festers inside our soul as a disease. Because backbiting is a disease, it's a plague. But like every disease, it has a cure. And this cure is to train our minds to avoid backbiting. Because we have to make it a habit to avoid it. Just like we can make a habit of backbiting, we have to make it a habit to avoid it. And we can also imagine ourselves eating the flesh of our brother. Because as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in his holy book, the Quran, Oh, you have believed, avoid much negative assumption. Indeed, some assumption is sin. And do not spy or backbite each other. Would one of you like to eat the flesh of his brother when dead? You would detest it and fear Allah. Indeed, Allah is accepting of repentance. So this ayah from Surah Al-Hujarat clearly states Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's opinion and his view on backbiting and how much he hates it. If we truly love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we need to stop this action of backbiting. The only way we can gain forgiveness from someone if we back if we have backbitten is to ask forgiveness to, to whom we have backbitten. Because and that's not an easy action. Because if we remember, we have just told that we have just destroyed that person's reputation. And we have to go up to that person and tell him, sorry, I've destroyed your reputation, I've talked bad about you. Can you please forgive me? It's not easy. And the Prophet peace be upon him said, a term of backbiting is to repent for the person you have backbitten. So we have to ask is for is to fight for, from that person. We have to ask Allah to repent for that person. Because he because since we have done a bulm against him, he deserves this. And if we cannot stop a group of backbiters, then we have to leave that group. But if we can stop it, we need to try and remind each other. We need to, we, we need to because there's strength in numbers. If multiple people remind each other, then most people will start stopping because when, when a lot of people do it, people tend to follow the norm. And another important factor we need to discuss is that the person being backbitten cannot defend himself against the person who is backbiting. Because that person is not there to defend himself. So we need to take upon that role. Because that person cannot justify himself against the claims of other people. The Prophet said, Whoever prevented the backbiter from backbiting, Allah will prevent a thousand doors of evil in this life and the day after. And finally, and most importantly, we need to discover our own flaws instead of focusing on the flaws of others. Because we need to fix ourselves before fixing others. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, says this, Blessings for the person who's struggling with his flaws than the flaws of others. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Muhammad wa alayhi wa sallam